My name is Jason Cleveland. I'm a broker owner at Trophy Properties and Auction, and today we're going to make a very simple recipe for back straps. The back straps are my favorite part of the deer, and this recipe is super simple. I've done it in elk camp and just camps all over the place because you need three ingredients soy sauce, butter, and brown sugar. It makes a delicious back strap. It's really good and easy to make, so we'll tear into it right now. The first thing I do is to get rid of all this silver skin on a back strap. This is chewy and if there is a gamey part of a whitetail, it'd come into that silver skin, but we just get rid of it kind of like filleting a fish of cut in there, and then I put that silver skin on the downside, and then just flatten the knife out, and go along and just carve that off. Until you get a nice, piece of meat and there's a, still some on there that I'll carve off like that but you just roll it up on its side and take a little of that off and the chewiness and the gaminess will be right out of it. Some people don't like to eat bucks. Um, they say that they're ruddy and gamey and stuff but I, I don't believe in any of that. If you do this to your back strap they're just clean, nothing, nothing to them but whatever you put on them, they're delicious. And so that's a nice, good, clean piece of meat there with no chewiness or no funk to it. And then we'll do the same thing here. This is more of the ribeye part. My dogs love this part. So this is be where the ribeye cap is. There's, a, there's some good meat in there and sometimes I'll cook that, with, do something different with it, but a lot of times the dogs get the benefit of that. Then you got two nice pieces of clean back strap with no connective tissue that's chewy or gamey at all, and then that'll take the, the marinade real quick well and be delicious. Okay, I have a souvé both at my farm and my house. I absolutely love them. I think it's for, if you shoot a, harvest a lot of wild game, whether it be fish or deer, turkeys, whatever it is, duck, I think a vacuum sealer is important to protect your investment of all that meat for a long time in the freezer. But if you don't have one, it's no big deal. You can just take a Ziploc bag. Today I'm gonna vacuum seal one and I'm just gonna set one in a vacuum seal bag which would do the same as a Ziploc bag and just hang it on the side. So we'll do one each way and showing you that you don't have to have a vacuum seal bag to do any of this stuff. And uh, we'll just put the back strap in them and the marinade and let them soak. Okay, the recipe for the marinade is pretty easy. It's equal parts of butter, soy sauce, and brown sugar. So a uh, stick of butter, as we just learned, is a half cup. Pretty easy there. Get some soy sauce ready and try not to explode this all over the kitchen. Not anywhere close to exact on this. It's all gonna taste good. Somebody's got a little bit of that. <laughs> And then we just kind of melt that butter and get it all melted together, melt that brown sugar, and, and get it in the souvé bag with the meat. While we're making the soy sauce, butter, and brown sugar marinade, I'm gonna go ahead and get the souvé out and get a pot of water going. There's a lot of different brands of these. They all do a pretty good job. This is a jewel, and you wanna just get enough water to where it all fits in there without flowing over and being above, there's a certain level on all of them where they take water in and spit it back out. You don't want to fill it too high, but there's marks on it. You can adjust up and down where it's set. So 
get it over ha half full, and then you, when you put the meat in there, it'll rise up a little bit and be about right. All right, we've got the souvé heating up the water. I like to heat it up to 123 degrees on a back strap. You can see, like if you had a, a beef tenderloin or a ribeye here, man, there'd be a lot of fat on it. But as you know, wild game doesn't have that marbled fat, and so it, you don't want to get it as hot. So I'd get it to 123, 125. I don't even get a back strap to 130 degrees. It's okay if you do, but I'll save that if I want to get it to 130 degrees for the grill when, when we do the next step of searing the outside. But just on the sous vide, 123 to 125, somewhere in there is the temperature I like. And again, I'll go vacuum seal one of these, but one of them we're gonna do just like it's a Ziploc bag or whatever, because you don't have to have a vacuum sealer to do this. And it'll turn out great. So we got that in there, and we'll go put some marinade in it. You don't need a bunch of it. Uh, we're gonna save some for the end. And if you need to make a double batch, that's fine. But just, just a little bit in there to coat it is all you need. You don't need it to be full of that sauce in there. But we're gonna baste it on at the end, so we'll kind of cover that in a minute. But I'll go vacuum seal one of these and the other one will just hang off the side with a chip clip. Good and coated. Here's the vacuum sealed one. You can just go ahead and drop it in. And the other one, and if this was a Ziploc bag, you can do the same thing. Just kind of drop it in, and the water pushes all the air out. And then just so this doesn't end up in there and you just boil in it, you can hold the bag on the edge like that, and it keeps the, the seal out of the water, the open end out of the water, and away you go. I put these in here for at least an hour. Uh, I think an hour on the average dough backstrap will get it to temperature of 123s. And you can check the temperature when you pull it out if it's not done or not. It, but it's really safe to eat and everything else. It's not gonna have the sear and it's not gonna look good and it's not gonna taste good if you just pull it out and serve it like that. So you'll wanna put a sear on it. But it'll take a couple hours and still be just fine to give you some leeway to finish the rest of your dinner. But you don't want these to be in there for like 12 hours. Like sometimes we do a goose recipe or the, I've got an elk or deer roast recipe to serve at medium rare. I do something similar to this but I cook those for 12 to, four, or to 24 hours in the sous vide. This is not one of those recipes. This is an hour to two hours is all this needs here. One hour later. All right, it's been about an hour. Um, they should be at temperature. We're gonna check them when we put them on the grill, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cool them off. A lot of times, if you take them from here and just put them on the grill, they're starting at 123 and you can get them up past the temperature you want pretty quickly. So I take them and you can just set them out and let them get the room temperature for a little bit, but I find it just does it a little faster if I put them in the fridge for about 20 minutes. They'll get that back down to room temperature and then you have more time to put a better sear and get more of this. We've been cooking this for a little while, but it makes a good glaze on there if, as you sear the outside, you just base some of that stuff on there. But we'll let these cool down so that they don't go from 123 to 140 real quick. We'll cool them back down to 80 to 100 degrees and then take them out to the grill. But we'll put them in the fridge for now. I just pulled them out, set them on the cutting board. I did the temperature check. They're about 100 degrees, 98 to 100 degrees. So that's, that's cool enough. I just wanna give myself a little room to sear longer and get more of this marinade to caramelize on the outside of it. So I don't wanna bring them out at 123 degrees and start from there because they'll can overcook pretty quick. So if you start them, if they're cooled off to 100 degrees, and we can just, I for the first bath, I just douse them in the marinade and they'll flame up. And on the green egg when I'm doing it, sometimes it gets too hot and too flamey in there, so I'll choke the fire out. I, 
I just go back and forth. The, the stuff, this stuff will burn. So I just keep flipping them more frequently than maybe I need to, but I just don't, I want to make sure that I don't get it burned. So if you flip it a bunch, it has a less tendency to burn that one side. But I'll just keep basting it on there until the internal temperature gets back up to about 125 degrees and pull them, pull them at that point and they'll be ready to go. Okay, there it's somewhere around 100 and between 120 and 125 degrees. Again, it's already cooked in the sous vide, so it, we're not relying on the grill to provide the safety temperature. But that's what they look like when they're done. Well, they're done. This is one of my favorite and easiest ways to cook a backstrap. If I'm gonna trick somebody that doesn't like to eat wild game, this would be the first recipe that I cook them because they'll eat a ton of this, have no idea it's wild, nasty game, but it's delicious. This goes with so many different meals and sides and everything else. Today, we're doing this at lunchtime, so we're gonna make sandwiches out of it today, but this is what it looks like when it's done. You can see how this whole thing in here is, none of it's overdone. You don't have to do the sous vide to use this recipe. You can just use it on the grill. Uh, if you don't have a sous vide, this recipe still works great. But the advantage of the sous vide is you kind of go edge to edge of not overcooked. If you don't use the sous vide, the outside edge is a little overcooked to get the middle to that perfect 130 degrees. But the sous vide is, I like that trick, but you don't have to use it. And You'll just have a little more overcooked on the outside to get the inside perfect like this, but you can see the how it's perfectly cooked all the way throughout when you use the sous vide. Mm -hmm.